Well, guys, here she is. Back on the road. My beautiful goose. Got a lot to do, of course. A lot of troubleshooting left to go through and wiring and sensors and whatnot, but she's back on the road, which is the best part. I love the stance right now. Pretty badass. Everything up underneath, I'll show you here in a second. Kind of give you the underneath look of what's going on, but uh, no leaks. I did have some valve cover issues that have been fixed. You can hear the fans. You guys didn't know yet, but I did add some cooler fans to the back side of the intercooler, which are pushing out some good air. They're two small fans. If you follow the Instagram or Facebook groups, then you already know that I picked up those fans. Working on the solution right now for the deck lid. Going to come up with some special mounts to go ahead and have it closed back up to where it looks stock because that's really what I want. The oil cooler fan is going good too. All part of the stuff that I went through when it came to troubleshooting and getting everything good to go. Let me go ahead and change camera views now and show you guys what's going on up underneath. Underneath this side first guys, a lot of you were concerned about the plumbing on my hoses and I have them well enough away from the headers. That is my boost control solenoid and I went ahead and used that special jacketing the high temp jacketing on almost all of my lines that came close to the header system. Everything looks good up underneath here. It is pretty close to the ground, so I have not decided yet if I'm going to jack up the rear end a little bit more or end up running a taller tire to get me up a little bit more away from the ground. Let's check out the other side. All right, we are on the other side now. This is my exhaust side. I need to get an exhaust hanger right now. I just have it safe to wire it up. So it doesn't go and hit the ground too much. It's already rubbed the ground a couple times, which, uh, sorry, Daryl. Everything looks great on this side. Once again, we are close to the ground. So if I was to hit any jumps or anything, that would be kind of bad news, Charlie Brown. I think I've got about four or five inches of clearance on the backside from the uh, bottom of the oil sump. Lots of you guys have been asking about these tires. These are the Continental Pro Contact Stream Sports. These are Z-rated tires in the back end here. 20550ZR15. On the front, guys, we've got, of course, they're a little bit different. They're not Z-rated on the front. 16560R15. Continental Pro Contacts, but they're not the extreme sport ones. I do like these wheels that I went with. I got these from Empy. These wide fives, they're just uh, kind of a stocker look. But I think it kind of gives it almost that Porsche look, guys. And you can see the caliber. And I went with those because I wanted some venting to help out with getting the heat out away from the wheel. With the hub, you know, the brakes. Cool beans, man. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and head over to the car show now kind of see what's going on there and maybe shoot some video while I'm there and then we'll be back in the garage later to talk about some more of what's going on what's to come but first off I'll give you guys a little bit of cruise time and show you what I see maybe give you a little bit of a couple poles with a turbo now remember this is probably only doing about 200 maybe 220 230 horsepower right now because uh we don't have it tuned plus we're not running the E85 yet good stuff see you in a second before I get hot behind the wheel and show you kind of what this thing does for the inside, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this content if you're enjoying it. And I know you are because Goose is back on the road. So of course you are. <laughs> now back to the video.
fast. Really fast. We needed the brake upgrade, guys. We might need another brake upgrade. I get fingers waved at me. You shouldn't be going that fast. How dare you? I got a beta buck behind me. <laughs> yeah, you got fans on that Hey guys, what's going on? Just a real quick walk around the Kima car show just to show you some of the stuff that shows up there. Now, if I would have hung out a little bit longer, I would have seen a lot more cars because the car show at, at the uh, the Home Depot here on every Saturday brings a lot of different types of cars. You got Corvettes, you got the old Corvettes, the new Corvettes, Mustangs, uh, a lot of classics, Lincolns, and then the BMW crowd shows up, the tuner guys, and then, you know, there's a few Volkswagens that are also there. I got there a little bit early because, you know, I was cruising around and stuff like that. But now we're going to go ahead and get back to the garage and talk more about, like, kind of the fixes and some of the things that we had to do to the engine to fix those oil leaks. So now back to the garage. And we are back, back in the garage, and if you caught the end of the last video, you saw that there was some problems with the engine. A little bit of leaking going on. Right while I was doing the priming, priming the oil system to check for leaks like you're supposed to. Get oil pressure before you go to crank that baby up, right? Well, we ran into some issues, and I'm going to show you a photo hmm. <laughs> right here of those issues. We have a solve. Came up with a fix. Okay, so when you tap a case for full flow... You gotta tap it right here. This is the oil return, and this is right in there. So I crank this down, well, pretty much to the hilt. You know, right around there. And I never felt any cracking, never heard anything cracking, but it cracked. 
it cracked right along there you saw in the photo. So what did I do? What was my solution? What did I come up with as my answer? And you guys just saw that I went ahead and installed a little bit of a full flow on the bottom side. You can use when you have no oil filter, not oil filter, but when you don't have an oil cooler that's part of the engine block. See, mine's blocked off right here. But when you don't have your oil cooler, you have an external oil cooler, you can go ahead and bypass this uh, pressure spring right here. It's a dual pressure relief case. You can go ahead and bypass this and, and the little CSP oil fitting that you put in here. It's got a dash 8 AN fitting on there that goes all the way up through and then that go ahead, that, that makes the oil return and goes through the passages the way you need to. Let me go ahead and show you on a picture right here. Yeah, show you how that works out. See, oil kind of passes through there, goes right by this area, this area that's now been blocked off with some weld. That's right. It's always nice to know a good welder when it comes to aluminum. And these uh, Autolino cases are aluminum cases. So good stuff, all figured out. And then I went ahead and put a full flow 90 on here. That's just gonna help out because you guys, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know how I feel about the hard 90s. That bad boy right here, that's a hard 90. And now we've got that full flow 90. Good stuff. All right guys, well that's gonna wrap up this video for the most part. We got Goose back in the garage. Let me turn you around and show you. Goose back in the garage, she's all happy. Happy to be back, back on the road. Yeah, I'll give you guys one more look at the engine. Yeah, why not? She runs like a monster, dude. Monster. She is a monster. Got some sensors to work out. See up on the board over here. Been doing some troubleshooting, getting the hall tech situated. I gotta get my fuel pressure sensor working. I gotta get the flex fuel sensor working too so we can get E85 running on this monster. Then we can get her over to Carlos and get her all uh, tuned up and ready to rock and roll. So he went through some of the fixes I had to go through with the oil system, that self-inflicted pain. But uh, we got her situated, got it all worked out, and good stuff, guys. I appreciate all my new subscribers. All you guys showing some real interest over on Instagram. Uh, if you haven't joined yet or followed me on Instagram, don't forget to do that. And also with the Facebook group, join up because if you have questions, that's going to be where you want to go to because I'm not always available. I do try to answer the questions that I can. Those guys that email me or send me uh, questions through the website, JW Classic VW, you can also get your channel sticker there, guys. Don't forget, uh, channel stickers help support the channel, help support the build and this content. I appreciate you guys when you get a sticker. Plus, uh, there's also some jet tags over there. More stuff to come as soon as we start putting some products out. Uh, Wayne and I are kind of working on how we're going to put out the kits for the turbo system that he's putting together. More to come on that soon. Let me show you some photos. Ooh turbo greatness from race engineering good stuff guys once again i appreciate all you all my new subscribers you guys are awesome don't forget to get out in the garage and get some work done get your babies out there get motivated get excited <sighs> don't give up because i'm telling you what my baby here put you me put me to the test <laughs> almost on a daily basis new stuff coming guys i'm gonna start uh we just did a live feed Working out the OBS software, and uh, yeah, I'm going to start doing a live feed with you guys. Maybe uh, once a week, where we can kind of talk about Volkswagen, talk about some of the questions you guys have, because there's always questions, right? See you guys soon. This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'm out.